feel good Friday, baby. Oh, yeah, and we're in the holidays. This is great. Are you going to any holiday parties this weekend? I have one on my calendar. Yeah, and I got, they I got know one. who it is. What does that what does that mean? Oh, well, he's probably watching. Oh, he? Mm -hmm. Oh, is it a one on one party? Party no, for one? No, but oh, he's throwing it. Interesting. And you may know him too. In fact, okay. everyone on this team may know who he okay, is. Okay, so I've been invited like four parties <laughs> this weekend, and I don't know what to do. Oh, wow. But we want to see. Your dance card is full. Well, I know, because everybody wants to be on this show. That's, that's the deal. We're making food. They think I come with food, and I do today. <laughs> we do. We always do. Hey, We're Michelle. Gonna... Hey, hey, how's it going? This is Michelle Valens. She's a pastry chef at the Hyatt Regency Hill Country Resort and Spa, and we are making your holiday sweet. Sweeter with s'mores. Oh yes. So yes, you've got yes. you've got you've got chocolate that you've taken we to have, the next level. Yes. Tell people how. Um, we added just a traditional chocolate Hershey bar. Mm -hmm. You add peppermint, white chocolate, anything you want on top. We added some nuts. Uh, and really anything you want to add on top. And the base for any s'more is of course the marshmallow, the yes. cushion, the mattress of love, yes. which you've created. How did you do this? Because I'm I'm looking at the different kinds that you have, and there's there's a lot in here. You got regular ones, and these are homemade, right? Homemade marshmallows. We have uh, vanilla. We have uh, bourbon caramel. Bourbon caramel. Yeah. Bourbon. Bourbon. Oh, nice. I like Makes that. Makes the party Look, a little better. You can pass one of those over here. I want to try one. <laughs> Stand by. Right. Yeah, they wiggle just a little bit over there. I put my fingers right. on them. I'm not going to give that to you, but <laughs> and you stack them up like that. That's real okay. good. Yeah. And then you have and then we have peppermint. Peppermint. Mm-hmm. Over there as well. Those are good. Yes. Can you taste yes. the bourbon? So these are homemade. Homemade. Okay, from so, scratch. Yeah, and so what's the secret to making them at home? It's pretty easy. It's actually just uh, egg whites, sugar, and gelatin. And then and you add your flavors however you want. Well, that's good. Here, for you on heaven. Mix and match. I've got to try one. Now, you've been a pastry chef for 13 years. Yes, ma'am. So you know what you're doing on that. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Pretty good. Okay. Right? Yeah. So, you can actually add that in your hot cocoa, too. Mm, right. Yeah, it's kind of like a little barge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little, yeah. Along. That's what yeah. the Land of Misfit Toys were on in that, in that cartoon. So yeah. you're going to show us how to build something? I am. All right, show us. All right, so we all know marshmallow is the main ingredient, right? Mm -hmm. So you get your graham crackers, yes. your chocolate, and your toaster marshmallow. Graham you got to get two graham crackers, okay. unless you want to make an open face uh, s'more. Oh, yeah, because you got to make a sandwich you gotta out of it. Smush it together. See, I like yeah. it. I like it. Well, but that, that is good. Okay, yeah. so. All right, so we'll piece these together. There's my marshmallow base. Yes. And there's the peppermint mm -hmm. chocolate. But you might want to give it a little stick over here. Oh, I need to, I need to melt stuff. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do this first. Yep, right on that fire right there. Go ahead. No, you go. <laughs> oh, I'm, I like mine dark. Now tell us about the event that you're having because you can make s'mores with Santa and celebrate the holiday. We do. We actually have uh, traditional s'mores that you can make um, in the lobby uh, Fridays and Saturdays through Christmas. Uh, we also have uh, Elf on the Shelf. I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, Little Elf on the Shelf. He's, he's a troublemaker. He is. He comes and he goes and he tells Santa you haven't been nice. So you might want to well, watch out for Why did Jeff. you say that when you looked at me? You know, I've heard a little thing. You heard and, a little uh, thing? Yeah. <laughs> What are you talking so, about? I yeah. talked to her before the show. That's right. So <laughs> I know all of it now. Okay. So, yeah. We melted our marshmallow. Yep. Then you want to put your chocolate right on top. And take your other graham cracker and just smush it together. Smush. Yeah. That's a culinary that's it. word. That's the only it? kind you don't want to like mix and match or well, I'm gonna make load them all up. Oh. Okay. I'm going to make another one, right? Yeah. Hey. Right. Yeah. yeah. There we, you go. Uh, we're also having uh, breakfast with Santa. Um, every Saturday, so if you guys want to come on down, uh, have a little breakfast get there? at Santa. He's there at 10 o'clock in the morning. He's there at 10 because I know yeah. he's resting up for the holiday. He is. He has a lot to do, but he's lucky to stop by and uh, have breakfast with us. How did you get the peppermint into the marshmallows here? Is that is that it's a, a flavoring? It's a flavoring mm -hmm. that you bought. Yeah. Okay. We'll toast that and get that a little. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Melted and put that on some more crackers over there. Look at yeah. that. Is there going to be story time too? There is story time with Elf on the Shelf. Ah. Okay. Yeah. So they'll be out there reading. Um, we're also going to do uh, dinner in Antlers, which is uh, one of our restaurants on property. And we also have a buffet in Springhouse. I don't know what's happening over there. Hey, it's happening. I'll tell you that. I know. That is gooey goodness. Look at that. Look at that. All right, down boy. You got it? You need another stick to go on there? I, I need a sandwich. I need you, another graham cracker. There you go. You ready for this? Here it is. It's happening. This is, this is great. Mm. Look at that. 
Wait, 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 wait. Peppermint right. marshmallow. Well, I've never seen that before. You've already, already, you you already eaten yours, over here. but I was thinking, since Fiona's looks pretty amazing, that you guys should uh, switch. <laughs> But not the one you've already eaten, though. You might well, want to. Here, I'll give her some of this. Switch. Here, you gonna feed me? Here, I do. Here, here you go. Have some. <laughs> have some. Have some. I'll have this double layer thing. This is like a. There you go. Look yeah. at this monster. It is double layer. All right, let's get the information up on the screen. Fireside s'mores and story time is complimentary and open to the public. Remember, it's free. It's free. It's free. It'll be happening Friday, September 4th, 11th and 18th, <laughs> from 6 to 8 in the lobby of the Hyatt Hill, Hyatt Regency Hill Country Resort yeah. and Spa. That is, that is, that, who decided we should eat and try to do a show right after? <laughs> Michelle, you really just got a little uh, something on Saturday face yeah. a little bit. Well, we, and we love to eat, and we'll come see you for the holidays. Yeah, thank you know, but before you have dessert, you should have a, a good meal. Mm -hmm. Okay, you love it's Cajun food. It's food truck food? Friday, yeah. It is food truck Friday. We're going Cajun style over here. Where you at? Well, we're eating on SA Live. Watch. Hey, y'all, that. Okay. Nothing a pole boy can't fix. That's right. Where you at? I look like I work at Waterbury with a shirt on. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Where are you at? Where are you at? Food trucking on SA Live and Wade Warner is the man. Where are you at? SA.com is the where you at food truck. And Wade, we're making some delicious New Orleans inspired Cajun food today, right? Yes, sir, we are. What are we making? Making a traditional New Orleans dish of boudin. Boudin! Boudin balls! Boudin balls. Normally they're in case such as sausage. Yes. This time we ball them up and fry them. Ooh, so these are boudin balls. Boudin balls, house-made boudin. Two types of pork. We smoke pork, we braise our pork, mix it up with the rice, spice it up, ball it, wow. batter, and fry it. There it is. All right, well, let's get to work. And so where can folks find you when you pull out? Where, where you at? Best way to find us is our website, where you at, sa.com. Where you at, sa.com. So you dress those up anymore? Yeah, okay, watch this. Yeah, we get them good. So we put them in this little uh, slurry, if you will. Oh, oh, hey, look over there. One of, one of our balls broke. Ball them up. Okay, it's time to fry. Drop it in the fryer. Oh, yeah. That's pretty pictures for the TV. Oh, they're nice. You'll plate this up with some chipotle sauce. and It's a house-made uh, remoulade sauce that we make here from the truck. A little bit of lettuce and cabbage mixed together. And so you plate that joker up and it is good to go. We'll just make a little spot for the ball right there in the middle. Look at that. Yeah. Pow. Get some. Well, variety is the spice of life for these boudin balls. Woo! Look at that. Good. You know any knife tricks? No. <laughs> you, don't, you don't do knife just, tricks? I know how to cut myself. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I don't know if we want to show that. that. Oh, hey, that's the gas. I was looking for the fridge. That's part of a boudin ball. Hey. I think I just fried something. I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm digging for extra balls. Is there extra food in here? We'll Hello? Find them. Hello? 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 This mixture here is the key. Yeah, that's the secret. Ah, right, there. right there. So what's in this? Uh, love. Really, I'm looking for it. Man, keep on looking. Stand, it's all in there. Stand by. Chuck Woolery, we need a love connection. Where are you? <laughs> He's buried somewhere. I'll be back in two and two. Look at that. Look at that extra one I made. That looks more like a gallstone. Mmm. Mmm. Look at that. Look at some of that, man. Some of that yummy boudin. Here it is. Look at that. There you go. Time to eat. You got a fork? Boudin, boudin, boudin. <laughs> Boudin balls. Good. Get in there. Look, you gotta All at once. Dig it up, baby. It's happening. Mmm, watch this. Boy, that looks delicious. Man, what a bite. It's gonna be hot, so careful. Where you at? SA.com. Where you at, food truck? Mmm, delicious. Free Money Fridays, we step into the IBC Money Machine with Alyssa Canales, born and raised right here in San Antonio, and she tells me she is already ready for the holidays. 
Oh, yes. I had my Christmas tree up before Thanksgiving. She's one of those. <laughs> I am, I am. Shopping done and everything already? Almost. A few oh, more people to go. You make me sick. <laughs> All right, well, let's try and win you some money. Yeah, so okay. step into the IBC money machine. I'm going to let you know the rules. You cannot pick the money up off the ground. You can't hold it up against the wall, and you cannot shove it down your clothes. You want to get it all in that box in front of you. Alyssa's family is here watching her mom, her dad, and her co-worker from across the street. Hopefully you don't have to be at work right now. We're going to put 30 seconds on the clock. Grab that money out of thin air, Alyssa, and shove it in the box in front of you. Keep going. Your mom and dad are counting on you. You have 20 seconds left on the clock. Alyssa, you're doing fantastic. She went to O'Connor High School here in town and works at the town plaza. Marriott Suites across the street. 10 seconds, Alyssa. We need more cheering. And five, four, three, two, one. Hands in the air, Alyssa. Nicely done. How do you feel? Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Wind blown, refreshed, things like that. Now we're going to find out what you win in just a little bit right now. Let's send it over to Jeff. I think a good blowout costs like 25 bucks at a salon. That was free. <laughs> Coming up, we have your local shopping guide for gifts your mom will love. And we want to help you keep the weight off this holiday, too. Can we do this out in the yard? We'll give you three exercises that will keep you looking great in any holiday dress. I'll be wearing one Saturday night. Wrap up the style at Bell's. You won't believe the savings. Why wait? Get 50% off our best and brightest throughout the store. It's the great Christmas price break. So hurry in for a brighter way to holiday at Bell's, part of our stage family. When you look in the mirror, do you see wrinkles in a sagging jawline? What if you could get firm, lifted skin that looks completely natural? What if it was actually affordable? And what if it only took a couple hours? Introducing Lift by Sono Bello. A fully customized facelift procedure that delivers stunning, natural-looking results. Lift is performed in a quick in-office visit, requiring less downtime than traditional facelifts, and it's affordable on almost every budget. With over 75 board-certified plastic and facial plastic surgeons, Sonobello is a leader in total body transformation. Lift sagging skin, soften the appearance of vertical neck bands, and restore your jawline. Lift by Sonobello can give you natural looking results at an amazingly affordable price. Call for your free consultation today and get $250 off your procedure. Call 888-570-4732 or go to Sonobello.com. Financing available with most credit types. Call 888-570-4732. If you experience regular sinus infections or other sinus-related issues, Texas Sinus Center is here to help. Beyond just treating your symptoms, we use a comprehensive diagnosis system to identify the root causes behind persistent problems like sinus pressure, headaches, allergies, and more. Medications only provide temporary relief, but our modern sinus solutions will keep you healthier and happier for the long run. Stop your sinus pain, sinus pressure, and headaches in sinus infection. Call the experts. Texas Sinus Center now. Ken French is the world-class clapper. 721 claps a minute. With the clapper, I only need two claps. Clap on, clap off. Claps things on, claps things off. Clap on the music. Just plug in your appliance. The clapper's great for hard to reach places. Take it from Kent, just get. Clap on, clap off. The clapper. Available at Walgreens, CVS, Participating Ace, and Kmart. The great Christmas price break is happening at Bell's, so why wait? Outerwear, sweaters, and gifts for the family are 50% off. Plus, take an extra 25% off with your coupon. Hurry in for a brighter way to holiday at Bell's, part of our stage family. Well, nothing is too good for mama. And when it comes to gifts this Christmas, we've got some great gift ideas 
for you that will help you get on that good list from your mom. Especially if you're like me who has siblings and you're kind of competing to see who gives the best gift and everyone's trying to one up each yeah, other. Exactly. I got Brooke <laughs> Mevin here from Alamo City Moms Blog with great gift ideas for mom. These are great gift ideas for mom, for the women in your life. So if you have a mother in law, a sister, a friend, anybody in, the, in your life that's a woman, these are going to be great gift ideas for them. So we'll start here. I love these pillows from Bird and Pear because they are so San Antonio. They take Mexican dresses and they hand make these. Every one is individually crafted, so one is not like the other. Each one is unique. But how cute are those? Just like your mama Just or like that woman mama. in your life. Yeah, yeah, but a great throw pillow. These are great for indoor. They're great for outdoor. But I think these are just so cute. And again, so San Antonio. Oh, very fiesta. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I love giving someone the gift of relaxation. And our friends at Massage Heights Deerfield um, Crossing really do a great job. Their retreat is perfect. You can get a gift card for a uh, service at their retreat. You can give a small gift basket full of great, just relaxing items. But again, I would love it if someone gave me the gift of a massage and being able to escape and get away. This, I think, could be one of those you're going to win the award from mom. And here. what's great is, you know, you've got the relaxation, you've got a pillow, and you can just fall asleep right there, you're take perfect. your nap. Exactly. And what's great about these gift ideas is it's, it's all local businesses. These are all San Antonio businesses. They're from our shop SATX uh, gift list. Okay. So the blanket scarf from Zell Boutique is huge this year. We are seeing this everywhere, but it's all over the boutiques. It's in all of the fashion magazines. But this is a scarf that is absolutely huge. Oh, the thing I that. love about it is it's super versatile. So you can wear it as a scarf. You could wear it as a throw. You could wear it. You could take it um, on a plane and travel with it. Wear it as a blanket. Exactly. So many different ways to wear this oh, blanket scarf soft. from it's Zell Boutique. Warm. And it's so soft. Mm. Um, I am, a, you can see, I'm actually obsessed with these oh. bracelets from Leah Lena. She has a store in Pearl, and these are handmade. So they are all individually made. They're different um, exotic skins, but you can get different colors. You can change the color of the cuff itself, uh, but you can go straight. This is an ABC News special report. California's shooting rampage. Now reporting, George Stephanopoulos. And we are coming on the air right now because we're about to hear from law enforcement officials on the scene in San Bernardino. Right there is Chief Jared Bergwan of the San Bernardino County Police Department. Major new development today. We've learned for the first time that the wife of that couple, Tafshin Malik, uh, did pledge allegiance to ISIS the morning of the attack. I'm here with our chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross. They just discovered this in the last 12 to 18 hours. Facebook executives actually saw the posting uh, on Thursday, took it down, and notified the FBI shortly thereafter. Let's listen to the chief. On Monday night, Tuesday morning before the incident, so November 30th, December 1st, uh, right around midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, uh, there was an incident at the uh, Regal Cinema in downtown San Bernardino at 4th and E Street. And what that case was is that a gentleman that was described as uh, appearing to be Middle Eastern uh, came up and spoke to the security guard around the time the theater was closing. And uh, he was asking the security guard some questions about the movies and times and things like that. But the security guard kind of thought that it was odd. That person ultimately left in a silver Volvo four-door vehicle 2012, 2013. We do not have a plate. The security guard thought it was weird. Shortly thereafter, the security guard then noticed a red late 90s Dodge Durango driving around the area with another person that was possibly Middle Eastern in appearance uh, that appeared to be taking some photographs in and around the theater. So the security guard took it upon himself, notified our police department. We've gone out that day or that night. We took a report um, and we put that out in a bolo to every law enforcement area, in, uh, I'm sorry, every law enforcement agency in the county as just simply some suspicious circumstances that were noted. So that is all we have on that. And then it went into the regular investigative channels and protocols where the local JRIC was notified and they're doing investigative follow up, looking at video, that sort of stuff to try to determine if there's a real threat or to see if there's any plates associated with those vehicles. At this point, we have zero connection that or zero evidence or information that connects that event with what happened here at the uh, at the Inland Regional Center on Wednesday morning. So I want to make that clear. But as a result of what happened on Wednesday, 
The San Marino Police Department has been basically in a tactical alert type situation, meaning that we have every officer in the department working. We are on 12 hour shifts, so it's a 12 on 12 off for all of our officers. We'll maintain that until we think it's appropriate to stand down. We don't have any credible information to indicate that there is a threat to this region right now. But I wanted to address that because of some things that came out to imply that we were hiding information. We are not hiding information from anybody, okay? And then lastly, what I want to do right now is um, this is going to be an official transfer uh, of this investigation in terms of information and how information is going to flow on this to the FBI. Uh, we certainly talked a lot about what that partnership is. I want to make it clear that our agency, the Sheriff's Department, the FBI, and the other federal agencies that are involved in this investigation continue to, to walk shoulder to shoulder in this investigation to make sure that we are doing the best job that we can. But in terms of information regarding the, the investigation on this incident at the Inland Regional Center, the home in Redlands, the search warrants that have been done, the officer-involved shooting that occurred as a result of this, this is an FBI investigation. They will be the lead on information regarding that. Myself and Sheriff McMahon will still be the lead talking about local safety measures and security. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the Assistant Director in Charge of the FBI, Dave Bodich. Thank you, Chief. Good morning, everyone. First off, I want to, I want to stress again to the families of the victims and to the friends of the victims. Let's remember they are first in this, in this scenario. We had victims who lost, one gentleman lost six children, one gentleman lost a baby, and he was taking his first trip to Disneyland next week. Other people did not have the chance to have that. Every one of those lives counted, and we want to offer our sincere prayers to those families. Secondly, I want to stress the partnership. You have seen this united front, which is incredibly important for an investigation of this complexity. This is a very complex investigation. It is a very long-term investigation. My partners here from the San Bernardino Sheriff's Department, County Sheriff's Department, the uh, San Bernardino Police Department, and the ATF have been incredibly important in this investigation. And we are lockstep in how we are handling this matter. I do want to, want to go forward today and tell you that as of today, based on the information and the, and the facts as we know them, we are now investigating these horrific acts as an act of terrorism. We have uncovered evidence that has lead, led us to learn of extensive planning. Obviously, ex we've, we've uncovered evidence of explosive, multiple armaments, you know that. You know the, the ammunition that was out there, the high-powered weapons, the explosive devices. We are continuing to go down the path to assure that ensure that we find all of the evidence that pertains to this matter. We have also uncovered evidence that these subjects have, they attempted to destroy their digital fingerprints. For example, we found two cell phones in a nearby trash can. If those cell phones were, were uh, actually crushed, we have retained those cell phones and we do continue to exploit the data from those cell phones. We do hope that the digital fingerprints that were left by these two individuals will take us towards their motivation. That evidence is incredibly important. I want to ensure that everyone understands that just because the FBI is now taking the leadership based on the trajectory of this case, we're not just taking this on our own. We are going to continue down the same path we have been, which is a lockstep operation with these partners. That is important. They are the protectors of this community. We have the mandate to investigate terrorism to its fullest extent. We are working hand in hand with our other federal, local, and state partners. We are also working hand in hand with our foreign counterparts to ensure that we find any, co any connections that pertain to this matter. Next, I'd like to introduce to you that we have established a national task force line, I'm sorry, a national hotline that I would like to invite the public to call if they have any information that pertains to this. Now, I would ask the public to please be judicious and make sure that even though if it's small, send it to us. Please do not send us things that uh, are obviously not pertinent to this matter because we've got a lot of work to do in the future. But if you think in any form or fashion what you have to offer pertains to this matter, please call us and give us that information. It's important. 
That number is 1-800-CALL-FBI or 1-800-225-5324. Once you reach that number, you can choose option four, and that will take you to where you need to be in that call tree. I want to ensure the public that your local, state, and federal law enforcement officials will continue to uncover every stone to ensure that we find all the facts that pertain to these two individuals. I don't have all the answers now. I am going to take some questions. How are, are there other suspects, sir? Are there other suspects that you're looking Sorry. at? Sorry. How are these two individuals linked to terrorists? We don't know all those answers yet. But can you give us an example of some? Now, we've, it's widely been reported some of the links in terrorism. We, I'm from CBS News. We've confirmed it with our own law enforcement sources. Communication with people who've been wanted here in the U.S., communication with people overseas. What of that are you ready to confirm publicly? What I'm ready to confirm is there are some, some telephonic connections between these two individuals, at least one of these individuals, and other subjects of our investigation. Is there a link to ISIS? Said inside the room during the shooting that led you to believe this was terrorism? We still don't have the answer to that, but so far the answer is no. Is there a link to ISIS? Is there evidence that you were directed by a, a terrorist organization? I'm sorry? Is there evidence they were being directed by ISIS or Al-Qaeda or something like that, or at least they were inspired? I don't have the answer to any direction. Were they inspired? We do not yet know the answer. I'm aware of the post that you're going to ask me about that's out on the on the uh, Facebook, and I'm aware of it. We're looking into it, but we don't know all the answers to that question what yet. Can you confirm the post? Communication with a terrorist, precisely. You said something. One of yeah, I'm not going to confirm that at this point. What is the Sir, matter? Matter? Are there other suspects? There's a number of there's a number of pieces of evidence that has has essentially pushed us off the cliff to say we are now investigating this as an act of terrorism. Is there other suspects? No, I'm not going to get into that today. How yes. There, other under under there are no other suspects currently under arrest. It is possible there may be some in the future. We don't know. Sir, can I ask Sir, about had, the digital information that may have found in the home? Uh, Sorry. The, the computers at the home. Uh, can you talk about that? Were they damaged? And also, potentially, for any investigator, how important is potentially information you can find on a hard drive, on a cell phone, in an investigation that now is focusing on terrorism? Good question. Yes. The, some of the digital media was damaged, as I discussed before. And yes, that is, we are, as I said from day one, we are continuing to go down the path of what was the motivation for this attack, because that will tell us a lot. As important, if not more important, is are there others, and are they based in the U.S.? Are they outside the U.S.? We don't know the answers. With so many Do you questions, have any why indication was the media allowed into the apartment? With so many questions still remaining. Well, because last night, so we executed a search warrant on that apartment, and last night we turned that over back to the residents. Once the residents have the apartment and we're not in it anymore, we don't control it. We did leave a list of items seized that I know some people have, and they're asking why do we give that. Uh, we didn't get. We have to give that out by law. We leave any time we execute a lawful search warrant. We have to leave for the residents a list that lists all the items seized during that search warrant. Sir, with all the ammunition that they had, uh, with all the ammunition that they had on them, do you believe they were planning a second attack somewhere? I don't want to speculate. It's certainly a possibility that we are looking at. Sir, do you believe that this was? Where did they get their orders from? Or were they acting independently, just with the idea that they were doing? That goes back to the direction question I took earlier. We do not know that, but we are looking very carefully into that. Do you, do you believe travel was a big part of this? Do I believe travel was a big part of this? The overseas travel that you did, big part of this? I don't know. Do he traveled overseas in 2013. Remember, folks, we're in day three. We're in day three, and I don't even, we're barely 24, uh, Sir, two full days into this. So we'll, we'll get there. We're not there yet. Remember, all these resources you see back here, that's why we're utilizing all of those in partnership to try to find every piece of evidence that's out there, from digital media, which should lead us, hopefully, to motivation, to connections via phone, emails, anything like that, to uh, human intelligence that may give us some. That's where we're going. But that takes time. That's not a three-day process. Yes, ma'am. I was told they were in a nearby trash can. They were found by our investigators. Well, yeah, yeah, there is any indication, uh, someone asked if this uh, wasn't a secondary target. Do you believe that this may have not initially been a target? Do you have, have you moved forward on the thought process about this? 
We don't know. So, we and, don't know. and that's what we hope to build is, is a, a working theory and then ultimately uh, a, a, some sort of a design of what we believe they were going to do. But again, day three, we just don't know. December 7th is Monday. Do we have any Pardon me? We don't know yet. It, it's certainly a possibility, but we do not know yet. Uh, we have. We are still exploiting the data. I've not seen it yet. We're still exploiting that, and that will take time. Uh, but I, I truly believe that's going to be the potential golden nuggets. But we just don't know yet. December seventh is Monday. Do we have any information that there may have been something planned for that particular day, and for some reason it got moved? December seventh, you said? Yes. Yes, I, I don't know any reason it was on that day. Remember, there was a Christmas party that took place inside that room. So you had a lot of people, you had a lot of management, you had a lot of people and employees in that room at that point. not under active surveillance. I am not aware and I do not believe there was any type of an investigation pending on him. Do you have a question? Did, did, did his name come up in connection with the preliminary probe? I'm thinking similar to the Boston bombing and the Tsarnaev. Yes, and I don't have any information that indicates that, no. Has anyone been the about the press being inside the apartment today? There was a man there who became a law enforcement officer who took the landlord away and said he did not in fact have permission to let people enter the apartment. The apartment was reboarded up uh, you're going to have to repeat that. I'm sorry. Do you have any concerns about the press entering the townhome this morning, even though you're saying you had completed your investigation there? Once, once we turn that location back over to the occupants of that residence, or once we board it up, anyone who goes in at that point, that's got nothing to do with us. So you say this is an act of terrorism. Does this mean this is the first time, if you conclude that it's ISIS, this is the first time ISIS has attacked America? I think you're taking a leap. We're not there. What I am confirming is that we are currently investigating this case as an act of terrorism. But were they in telephonic communication with people in this country or people in foreign? Sorry? Were they in telephonic communication with people here in the U.S. or elsewhere? We know they were in telephonic conversations with people here in the U.S. I am not aware of all the overseas connections yet. We're working with our foreign partners on that. Yes, I, I can only hear one at a time, guys. The family and their lawyers question the veracity of the terrorist connection. Is there anything there? What do you have to say to that? They question the veracity of their locations. Okay, so yes, yeah, good question. Yesterday, I said to you, the FBI is an organization that is apolitical. We are a fact-finding organization, and we deal in facts. I don't have all those facts yet, so I don't know the answer to the question you just asked me. There are details about how the ISIS has claimed responsibility. Do you have uh, anything on this? Uh, not, an, not unusual on that they website, would. On website, the Amos, they've done their official website where they put over videos. They've, they've claimed responsibility. I'm, I'm not surprised. I've not heard of that yet, but I'm not surprised if they would claim. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. Uh, but again, it, it only helps them to be able to attach themselves to an act like this. I don't know the answer. Someone detained that gave them the rifle. There is a person of, there is, we don't know, okay, let me go back on that one. There's, there's some differentiations there. There is a person that we know of their location who purchased those weapons, but I'm going to let ATF answer the questions on the guns because that's what they're here. To do. The person is not under arrest at this point. Are they, so they are in custody, being questioned. They're not under arrest at this point. Why do you think they stopped shooting inside that room? I don't know the answer. Was, was, was that, face, that Facebook post, was that Facebook post, did they, did they pledge allegiance to either ISIS or Baghdadi or any other principle connected specifically with any known terror organization? I'm aware of the Facebook post you're mentioning, and uh, I saw the same thing you did. We don't know what's there yet. We're still continuing to look into that. Mark Zuckerberg confirms that that post had been made and yes. that it had been made just as the attack had been starting. I know it was in a general timeline where that post was made, and yes, there was uh, a Pledge of Allegiance. Do you know the dynamic of the marriage? Because there's a lot of curiosity there, and, and people that are saying that perhaps the wife may have influenced them. Do you have any more insight? 
I, I've been asked that, and I don't know the answer whether she influenced him or not. Um, being a husband myself, we're all influenced to an extent, but I don't know the answer. But what you've learned about her, has that influenced your beliefs? We're investigating it as, as an act of terrorism for good reason. What about have, have you found any prior to this? Pardon me? Have the FBI known of her? Um, We did not not have her under investigation previously. I'm going to take three more questions and then I'm going to end it. Yes, they were under the radar. The telephone were found near the center or near the townhouse. Uh, I believe they were found near the townhouse. Are you concerned that they were flying under the radar? Pardon me? Are you concerned that they were flying under the radar? Do you know that they were that they were acting under the radar? Well, of course I'm concerned. Any one of us would love to have stopped this act. When you go into a crime scene like that, it's one of the most heinous things you'll ever see. It's horrific. That you so, had no, no, no awareness that you weren't tracking them, that they weren't on your radar. Of course, I'm concerned. We didn't know. There's nothing that we've seen yet that uh, would have triggered us to know. The government's going to be Yes, ma'am. Pardon me? We don't know. What I can tell you is we are not aware of any further threats. In, in the U.S. at this time. And I want to go back to your point, ma'am. You said the uh, government spends a lot of money on surveillance. Uh, we are also, the FBI is also a federal law enforcement agency that is bound by federal law, so we don't do wide sweeping massive surveillance without legal process. Sir, Next question. No, Last question. Yes, ma'am. So what I would say, first of all, I think this this community, I'm going to leave that to the chief and the sheriff to deal with and, and talk about. They are the true protectors of this community. I would say to this community, you've been incredibly resilient. We are with you. We stand by you. We are focused. The FBI's number one mandate is to protect the homeland from attack. And we will absolutely engage whenever we see potential threats. As the director has said many times, we have a number of terrorism investigations across the country currently that are going on. That does include extensive surveillance. So what I would tell the community, to answer your question completely, is I would tell them, continue to do what you do. If you see things that are concerning, push them up to local law enforcement immediately. If they rise to a certain level, or if you want to push it to both the FBI and local law enforcement, feel free to do that. These are your protectors. But do as you do normally. Go about your day. Do not let this cause mass hysteria. We're not there. We're not there at all. We have a long-term, very complex investigation that we have to complete. And that's going to take time and a lot of energy and a lot of hours and a lot of agency expertise. But I assure the, I assure the American public we will do everything in our power within the law to get that done. Thank you for your time. Next, I would like to introduce Sheriff John McMahon. Thank you, Dave. Very good question, and that's why we're here today. The primary, my primary responsibility and the primary responsibility of the law enforcement leaders you see behind me is to ensure the safety of the public that we serve. You've already heard there's apparently evidence to suggest that there's a terrorist connection to this event. We have no known credible threats to the communities that we serve. I would ask that the community remain vigilant. Don't hesitate to report any suspicious activity to the local law enforcement. We have added additional resources, as had my partners from law enforcement that stand behind me, to ensure that we have the staff necessary to investigate and to protect the communities that we serve. We have nothing to suggest there's anything additional associated with this event, but we remain partnered up with the law enforcement from the FBI, ATF, Homeland Security, and that if any threats come about that appear to be credible or not, we will fully investigate those to help ensure that the public that we serve is absolutely safe. I will echo what Dave Bowditch suggested, that this is a team effort. We all have to work together as a team to address situations of this magnitude. 
We remain committed to working with the FBI, our local partners, as well as our federal partners to ensure that the resources that are needed are applied to make sure we investigate everything possible and keep the citizens that we serve safe. Thank you. Sheriff, Sheriff, is there a concern, though, that there was no credible threat or known credible threat in advance, and then this occurred, and so now we're back to an environment where there's no known credible threat, and could San Bernardino or any other town in the country be facing the same kind of thing happening an hour from now? Certainly that's the possibility. But crimes across our county and across our state oftentimes occur without any notice. You saw how the men and women of this law enforcement agency, as well as the partners that we work with in our region, performed two days ago. Considering how they performed and addressed the issue, I truly believe that we are prepared to deal with whatever threat or incident occurs. Law enforcement is staffed up, as I suggested. Our local law enforcement leaders remain in constant contact with one another. And as I suggested, my top priority, as well as those that stand behind me, is the safety of the public that we serve. Thank you. Sheriff, on the townhome, Redlands Chief, do you have jurisdiction over the townhome, and have you sealed the townhome? There you have it right there from the Assistant Director of the FBI in Los Angeles. This is being treated now as an act of terrorism, being investigated as an act of terrorism. A lot of new information in that press conference right, ne right now. Brian Ross, uh, the, the chief said there were a number of pieces of evidence that pushed this off the cliff towards investigating as an act of terror. Right. In addition to the huge arsenal, the advanced planning, he cited two things. Uh, one, the pledge of allegiance to ISIS uh, by the wife there who went into the shooting. We're told it happened just moments after the attack, literally moments after the attack. She went on Facebook to pledge allegiance. In the last 12 hours, the Facebook executive spotted this, took it down, and notified the FBI. And the FBI assistant director also said they've picked up evidence of telephonic communications between one of the shooters and several terror suspects known to the FBI. Let me take that to our senior justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, in Washington. What will the FBI do now? And I know you're waiting for the FBI director, uh, Mr. Comey, to speak as well. But what will the FBI do now to track through all those telephonic connections, knowing that some of those cell phones were, as the assistant director said, crushed? They are undergoing an extensive uh, review by their computer uh, forensics analyst, George. That is a top, top priority. You heard the assistant director talk about that. Also, they have sent some of these pieces of these phones and the hard drive to Quantico. They have an extensive lab in Quantico, Virginia. But, George, one key thing that came out of that press conference today, these two people, these two suspects, were not on the FBI's radar. And the FBI director has been warning for some time about the potential that ISIS, through a social media campaign, would influence inside people inside the United States to, as he said, quote, kill, kill, kill. The notion that these people were not under FBI investigation in any form is a serious issue. It sure is. The, the L.A. director said they were not under active surveillance, not under investigation. A couple of other key questions there, Brian Ross. Many questions about the gentleman who bought the guns, the long rifles. Uh, for the couple. Uh, the assistant director said he's not under arrest, leaving up the suggestion that he is being questioned. That's right. This is somebody they know who it is. They've been looking for him. He suggested that person is under, a cu under uh, custody now, being questioned. They said he's not under arrest yet. Those also investigating an incident on Monday night where it appeared that a movie theater was being cased in some fashion. Right. Security guards there became suspicious of a man who described as Middle Eastern descent. Uh, who asked about showtimes, et cetera, and then he saw that same man in a different vehicle. He said essentially casing the movie theater. Uh, no known connection to what's happened, and this could just be uh, a case of jitters, but it's the kind of thing they urge people today to report to local police if there are any suspicions. Just before this press conference, the extraordinary scene uh, at the house where this couple was living, reporters were let inside with cameras, including our own Matt Gutman. Matt, tell us about it. It was remarkable indeed, George. Just inside that house, holes were punched through, and uh, you walk in, glass was shattered, strewn on the floor. In the kitchen, you could see that a meal looked like it had just been cooked. Further into the living room, there was bedding on a couch, more broken glass, and of great interest to the FBI, of what they had taken out, boxes of ammo. Uh, in addition to that, invoices. Upstairs, you could see that baby's crib. You could see uh, a computer area nearby. That is something of 
great importance, a printer nearby as well. The guts of the computer were taken out. FBI obviously trying to go through that. Uh, you see a prayer rug on the floor. There are also prayer books all over the house. No other books that we took notice of. Again, you see a closet. There are clothes inside. It seemed like the house of an ordinary family just living. Uh, obviously, all the things to interest of the FBI were taken out like ammo. Um, everywhere you look inside that house, you see evidence of a family living a normal life, at least now. Um, suitcase opened up with um, bedding inside. It was not the type of place that looked like the den of terrorists. It seemed that in that nursery that the parents took great care of their child. There are plenty of toys around, but of course that belies the truth of what we know happened inside all that ammo and all those bombs. Nursery George. in one room, stockpile in another. Just remarkable. Uh, and, you know, one other thing we should say that the assistant director said that they had no control over that house uh, today. Once they turned over to the residents, once they had taken everything they needed under the search warrant, they had no control over that house. We're going to continue to follow this, monitor the FBI director's uh, press conference coming up in just a little bit. And, of course, David Muir will be on the scene tonight for World News in San Bernardino. I'm George Stephanopoulos. This has been a special report from ABC News. From the Riverwalk. And the Buckhorn Saloon and Museum. From well, the Riverwalk. <laughs> the hey, holiday season is in full effect. I know. You want to go out in the yard and put some colors out there? Maybe Why have not? some fun? You know, I know you've got uh, lights, but Wayne Harrell can tell you how to put some flowers out there. It'll spruce things up just in time for the winter season. Hey, everybody. Today we are out in front of the garden center in the parking lot. And as usual, we've got trucks coming in left and right, getting in new, fresh product all the time. And speaking of fresh product, I wanted to spend a little bit of time with you guys talking about transforming that summer garden that might be getting a little bit tired and tattered after that hot, dry summer we had and incorporating some great winter color to kind of spruce things up for the holidays and stuff. There's a lot of great things that you can choose from to kind of replenish and spruce up those color areas in your landscape. Right behind me and in front of me are some of my most favorite things. In front of me, which look like little tiny baby pansies. These are called violas. They're kind of a little low spreading ground cover type of bloomer. Now, all these winter plants are gonna bloom and do great and they don't have to be covered during frost and they're gonna provide great color for you up until it starts to get hot again in the coming spring. My name's Wayne Harrell and I'm with the Garden Center right here on the corner of Bandera and Prue Road. If there's ever anything we can do to help you with your yard garden, come see us. My name's Wayne. They're getting cold across the country, and of course, the holiday season is here. But it'd be nice to know that if you bought a blanket, a blanket also went to someone in need, especially a child. So Bambino's is a baby and children's boutique serving San Antonio, and we, they make cute little baby bird blankets, and they're vintage designs. And here to show us how to make one is Karen Saunders, owner of Bambino's Boutique. And I got to tell you, these are so absolutely darling look at these pillowcases thanks yes so little bird vintage designs is a new line we're carrying at bambinos it's a local company um, mama five is the owner and designer of all these handmade products mm -hmm. and just as a, a baby store in this community we love to be able to carry local um, customized really unique things for our customers to gift and buy for their own kids and Little Bird um, did some exclusives just for Bambinos. So they, we've brought a few of those pieces here. You can't find them anywhere else. Oh, wow. So that's cool. So yeah. if folks wanted to buy, they're there. These yes. are just for you guys. They are. These designs. And by our Bird. trunk okay. show this Saturday from 10 to 5 will feature the entire Little Bird collection. So oh, wow. all of their, we've shown the, the Ava Bird here. But the gecko, the octopus, the lion, all the sweet collections will be in the store with the owner and her flock. Um, we'll be painting birds, so bring the kids out. To so the kids can learn how to paint on yeah. fabric? We'll be using watercolor, not, okay. not this one. Say. but Yeah, <laughs> and then um, another local partner is Bird Bakery, who is going to be providing all the treats for the day. Yes, they're, of course, on Broadway. We've yeah. spent some time there, and they've been on yeah. the show. They have such great stuff. Oh, it's delicious. Okay, so you have some examples here mm -hmm. of how you can kind of create your own design at home using a special kind of fabric paint. Uh -huh. right? So that's a textile paint. You can open it up. Okay. And the process is a batch process. This is how. This is why we carry the line. We just fell in love with all um, the attention to detail that goes into these. So you can take that brush. This is an example of um, 
the hand drawn, they're traced onto this paper and you can paint away and you don't have to worry about staying in the lines because they're all going to be cut by hand, stitched by hand. And so, and you, so, this, so you guys give back as well? Yes, so for every blanket, levy, and um, pillow, uh, Little Bird donates a blanket to a child in need. Oh. So um, they love supporting the local community. Our next give back is on December 17th, just in time for Christmas. And then additionally, um, Little Bird has agreed to give a portion of every sale at Bambino's of Little Bird to our charitable partner, Hand to Hold, which supports families of preemies and medically fragile babies. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so great. Always good just, to give back, especially over the holiday season when yeah. that's first and foremost in everybody's mind. And of course, you guys over there, you could do infant and toddler clothing mm -hmm. and just incredible and gifts, stuff. Lots yes. of gifts. And so you're painting the first coat on here. You'll actually have to, after the show, do the second coat and the third coat. And then it's heat set, washed and dried, heat set again to get to this brightness. And then you can wash it, dry it, and it stays like this. So it's actually a, a piece of art that you can gift. Then all the stitching is, creates the details, really brings the bird to life. And then there it is, the yeah, final the product final over product. there on the pillow. Oh, so incredible. Thank you so much, Bambino's Boutique, of course, here on the show. For more information, you can head to our website, salive.com. And, of course, their trunk show happening this weekend, right? Yes, Saturday, 10 to 5. Christmas Light Fest at the Don Strange Ranch, the most dazzling light display in the San Antonio Hill Country area. Open nightly till December 27th. Wake up and start here. Good morning to you. It's Friday. It is December 4th. Thank you so much for being with us, everybody. Expect the weather where you live. It is going to be just fantastic this weekend. Nice, cool, crisp mornings, beautiful afternoons, couple of clouds here. Monday, fighting flu season with your cell phone. See how this could be your best tool for staying healthy. Well, after this fantastic weekend, is it going to be just as nice for the upcoming work and school week? Find out the very latest, 4.30 to 7 on Good Morning San Antonio. We'll see you bright and early Monday. Buy smart at iMart Express. They prove that quality glasses don't have to cost a lot. Two complete pairs start at just $38.71, and you can wear your glasses today. You just get more for your money. Buy smart at iMart Express. Are you or someone you know struggling to hear? New Sound Hearing Aid Centers is proud to introduce AMP, a new kind of hearing device that sits invisibly in your ear canal. It is comfortable to wear and easy to remove. New Sound Hearing Aid Centers, one of the nation's largest hearing aid providers with over 50 locations in Texas, has been selected to conduct a field test of this new product. For a limited time, New Sound is seeking 100 people to participate in the evaluation of AMP. Hearing consultations to determine candidacy will be performed free to all callers. Qualified candidates will be asked to evaluate this industry-first hearing solution. After completion of the evaluation, participants will have the option to purchase AMP for only $750. Major insurance carriers have expanded hearing benefits, so you may qualify for hearing aids for little or no money out of pocket. Better hearing has never been more affordable. Spaces are limited. Those interested must call today. My doctor doesn't take my insurance anymore. Avoid 1-800 numbers, long waits, and frustration of talking to people who don't know you or healthcare. Since we carry most of the plans on the market, we can make sure that most of your doctors accept the plan. We check availability of your medications, in most cases saving you hundreds of dollars per year. We also find plans that meet unique needs. The time to enroll or change your Medicare Advantage plan ends on December 7th. And remember, at AHIA, it's about family, and we really mean that. Me, huh? At Auto Boulevard, we let you drive more car for your money. Looking for a family car? We got it. Want a truck? We got it. Want to spoil yourself with a Corvette, Classic Camaro, Aston Martin, or Mercedes? We got it. All our cars are Carfax certified. Good credit, bad credit, no credit. We have lenders ready to get you into your new car. Visit our original location at 11,300 North IH35 and come celebrate the grand opening of our 3904 San Pedro location Saturday, December 12th. Buy smart at iMart Express. I got two pair with progressive lenses, and they were ready before I could finish my lunch. Two complete pairs with progressive lenses start at just $76.92. Buy smart at iMart Express. Aw, oh, now this is a warm fuzzy if I've ever seen one. It sure is. This yeah. adorable puppy. 
This is Tumble. He is an adorable two-legged puppy. He was born this way and was rescued when he was two weeks old. He learned to walk on his own using his nose and back legs. But look at what they made for him, a 3D printed wheelchair that helps him get around. That's awesome. The engineering students at Ohio University created that for that sweet puppy dog who can have a normal oh, life now. I didn't see him go. Oh, that was it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to let a broken duck feet play us out. <laughs> we're going to get them a wheelchair, too.